How are we doing, guys? In this finish, Luton Town 3, Arsenal 4. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> I've lost count how many times I've said that this club will be the death of me. And I tell you something, they will be the death of me. Declan Rice in the 97th minute. Rose like a salmon pet in there. That's why you pay the big money for the big players, for the big moments, changes games. That's nine points we've managed to get from positions where, you know, we're dropping points in those last moments. Oh my God. And I'll tell you something, David Rea has a lot to thank Declan Rice. He has a lot to thank. We're not going to skate over it. We're not going to, you know, forget about what David Rea did out there. The three goals that we conceded against Luton were absolutely pathetic. The first goal from a set piece. What did I sit there and say in my preview to this game? That Luton's strengths are set pieces. Mikel Arteta and his coaching staff and everybody else would have worked all week on set pieces and what Luton do and how they do it. And we fell asleep. And then we go and get ourselves back in front. It's half time. It's like, right, OK, they're not going to be able to maintain this level. We'll go again. And then they get another set piece. And David Rea, what on earth are you doing? Pathetic. And then minutes later, when you think it can't get any worse, he lets a Ross Barkley shot go straight underneath him. And I'm sitting there three, two down, and I'm like, am I seeing things? What on earth is going on? I genuinely would like to ask this question. Has Aaron Ramsdale made as many mistakes in such a short period of time that David Rea has? We all know that Aaron Ramsdale's made mistakes. Don't get me wrong. But David Ray has only been here for a few months. And there's a catalogue of errors. And I'm sitting there thinking, Aaron Ramsdale ain't made that many, surely. It ain't that bad, is it? Honestly. And you wonder why that everybody keeps talking about the goalkeeper situation. Because you'll have a couple of good games and then there's moments like this. You got bailed out tonight massively by Declan Rice. Bailed out massively. Oh, and listen, at the end of the day, right, if you're going to sit there and you're going to talk about, um, you know, the overall game and Luton deserve to get themselves a point or something. Listen, they worked really hard. Let's, let's you know, get that one out there. They worked extremely hard. All right. They kicked us off the pitch. But it was inevitable that that's what they were going to do. They're not going to go and play football against us and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That's just suicidal. So they went and played to their strengths. They were getting the ball in the box. They were very physical. And it nearly worked. It nearly worked. They nearly took a point from this game. And they would have looked at that and said, yeah, that's a big point. They'd already taken a point off Liverpool at Kenilworth Road. They've got Manchester City coming up on Sunday um, at Kenilworth Road again. And I think Man City will destroy them, to be quite honest with you. Um, but it's like, I, I just look at it and I just think, silly mistakes, something not clicking in the final third, and it ends up being a game you're looking at and you're kind of just like, pfft. big three points, but let's look you know, at the bigger picture. <laughs> we defend anything like that um, in games coming up when we've got the likes of Aston Villa, Brighton, etc. next. <sighs> yeah, it's... it. The thing that annoys me is that you know what Luton were going to, you know, do. You knew what they were all about. You knew how they were going to play. And yet we still weren't able to do it. And... This is what I tried telling people before the game. 
And this is why so many people are so clueless. This is why so many people need to stop sitting in front of a camera. They need to stop talking on podcasts and, you know, previews and everything else. And I see so many disrespectful people talk about how this was going to be a walk in the park. How it was going to be our easiest game. Make loads of changes and everything else. And I'm sitting there thinking, what? Really? You know... Luton's games at home this season, the ones they've lost, they've not lost by a margin of more than one at all at home. Even when you put this one in there now, it's only one goal. They're always in the game. They're completely different home and away. The games at the Emirates, I've got no doubt whatsoever will tear them apart. Four, five, six, all day long. But Kenilworth Road... It's a completely different level and I said it and too many people are sitting there disrespecting, talking about we're going to do this, that, the other and oh, it's this. Oh, shut up. Seriously, shut up. All right. Go and learn a thing about football before you start talking about it. Absolute clowns, all of them. But listen, we got the three points and I'm trying to even think about the goals, man. It just feels like. It's so long ago that we got the first goal. Martinelli scores. It was really good, um, you know, play by Bukayo Saka. Quick thinking, um, you know, with the, the throw on. And it allowed us to get the space and we got the goal. Um, the second goal, it was set up by Bukayo Saka with the ball into Ben White. Um, something that a lot of people will not actually look at. They'll see the goal score was Gabriel Jesus. But you watch the run at the near post by Kai Havertz and he drags two defenders with him, which leaves the space behind for Gabriel Jesus to have a free header. Um, and a lot of people won't see that. They'll just see the goal. Um, and then obviously we go 3-2 down. It was really important to respond immediately. We did. Um, another really good goal is like Jesus, brilliant hold up play, lays it in, Havertz, he scores again, 60 million down the drain and all that. Um, and then it was like 25, 30 minutes of just constant, you know, pressure, um, little moments in and around the box, some half chances, some near misses, some moments where you're just looking and thinking, it's just not going to happen tonight, is it? It's just not going to happen. And um, referee gives six minutes. Um, Luton can sit there and say that this goal was a minute after and everything. Listen, you're trying to waste time down. At the end of the day, it, it's a minimum six minutes. Okay, it doesn't mean six minutes on the button and that's it. It's done. All right. It always goes over because teams try and waste their time in those you know, in dream, you know, time minutes. So that's why it's gone over. And I remember when Odegaard first had the ball and I'm thinking, get it in the box. Like he's going to blow his whistle any moment. But it's the intelligence. He plays it out to Sinchenko. And what he allows him to do is get a better angle for the cross. And the cross is just absolutely, oh, it's delicious. Um, Declan Rice, if you watch his movement, he pulls behind the defender, then pulls back in front. It's just superb. Gets the header, goes into the bottom corner, and it's literally the last kick of the game, and it's the three points. And I'm looking at it, and I'm just like, thank you. Oh, at the end of the day, it saved me as well from the banter with my mates and everything, because even a draw... Oh, mate, my phone would have been going absolutely nuts with my mates and just messaging me. And and listen, at the end of the day, like I said, it's a difficult place to go. All right. Going down to Kenilworth Road is not going to be easy for a lot of teams this season. Um, and I feel that it's home form that will probably keep Luton in the Premier League. Um, but listen, at the end of the day, it's massive for us because it would have been two points dropped against the side in the bottom four. It's just one of them games you have to win. You have to win these games. And, you know, Man City and Liverpool and whatnot would have all been sitting there thinking, yes, two points dropped. Yes, they would have been buzzing. 
And then all of a sudden they've gone from that moment of like, yes, here we go, to like deflation. Like, oh no, now the pressure's back on them. Because if you don't win tomorrow, then we're pulling further away. We're six ahead of Man City now. And they've got a tough trip to Aston Villa. So listen, we got the job done. David Rea, thank your lucky stars for Declan Rice. And listen, us as fans, thank our lucky stars for Declan Rice. Looks like we absolutely robbed West Ham. £100 million. <laughs> Absolute bargain, boys. <laughs> Lovely. So listen, that is it for my match reaction. We got the three points. Whew. Oh, one way or another, we'll get them. Oh, mate. Um, listen, there's going to be a DT's Daily tomorrow. Um, oh, I can't even think straight. That has just emotionally drained me. Um, but listen, um, hit the subscribe button if you're new around here. Um, smash a like on the video. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of the game and everything else. And um, I will see you a lot soon. I'm out of here. <laughs>